Many thanks for joining us on News at 10 tonight. This is coming to you from our studios here at Adesawe in Kandakra and also live on DSTV Channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Let's take a look at the stories that have been topical and trending in the day. Grandfather of missing 19-year-old Ruth Abaka says the results of the police DNA test will be inconsequential to the family's belief that their relative is still alive. Emmanuel Anza Kobina stated that the family allowed their samples to be taken because they had to comply with what was required of them and not because they believe that the DNA matching tests can do anything. Also, the public relations officer of the Eastern Regional Police, DSP Emmanuel Tete, is making a strong case for crime laboratories to be decentralized to quicken investigation and prosecution of cases. Currently, the Eastern Regional Health Facility does not provide genetic testing for paternity or criminal cases. Now, the health of patients seeking health care at the Salaga Government Hospital is at risk as patients and visitors resort to open defecation. In the hospital, the only toilet facility constructed in 2002 under the HIPIC project has deteriorated, forcing them to ease in the open, a situation described by health providers as dangerous. Elsewhere in the Ashanti region, the Coalition of National Sovereignty will be staging a demonstration in Kumasi over what it describes as an increasing spate of public sector corruption. The coalition believes the president has not shown enough commitment in punishing some appointees cited in corrupt deals, hence emboldening others to follow suit. Let's now start with the big one. So in the big one tonight, exactly a month ago, the police issued a statement that it will in four weeks complete the medical test on DNA samples of the retrieved skeletons suspected to be the bones of the kidnapped Takradi girls. In our story of the week, we look at development so far and why the police is yet to release the results as the timeline giving elapses. In August, the police issued a statement that it will, in four weeks, complete the test on DNA samples of the retrieved skeletal remains suspected to be those of the kidnapped Takradi girls on August 5. The police, in the same statement, also pointed out that it will investigate all angles as they continue with the search of the kidnapped girls. After some objections from families of the girls, they provided DNA samples for the test, but requested for independent investigations to be carried out. We are prepared to do an independent DNA test in South Africa. Already, there are threats from residents of Takrade to embark on series of demonstrations if the DNA results happen to match that of the retrieved skeletons. The missing of the three Takrade girls is one of the mysteries that will go down the annals of this country. The period that the police asked for for the release of the results of the DNA test has elapsed and pressure is mounting across the length and breadth of the country. Ghana until recently took samples for DNA testing to Europe and South Africa. Many of the cases that have really called for DNA testing in Ghana have been those about paternity. One of the persons who made DNA paternity testing popular in Ghana is ex-footballer Ni Odate Lamte. I thought I was the father but uh, upon rumors that they are not my kids. They said I have to do DNA. My lawyer showed me where uh, they do the DNA. I got to know that, yes, 
the kids are normal. Chief biomedical scientist at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Augustine Sego, is one of the brains behind DNA testing in Ghana. He tells us DNA testing goes beyond just paternity testing. I did a feasibility study. I went to 28 courts. So I went far to search for information as to where and when do they request for this crucial test. Upon this study, I came out with the fact that there were a lot columns of cases that are pending in the court for the DNA. So, we asked him if DNA tests can be done on the skulls found in the septic tank purported to be those of the Takwadi missing girls. Yes, DNA can be done even when the, the case is more than seven years. It's because in a scalp with the tooth on the mandible, okay, there's a nerve connecting the tooth to the scalp, okay? And these are cells. I think they are the last thing that they destroy. The issue also brings to fore the challenge of the absence of a functional DNA facilities in all major health facilities in other parts of the country apart from the capital Accra. And even in Accra, the biggest hospital, Kolebu Teaching Hospital, is currently unable to offer the service as the only DNA laboratory that serves the whole of West Africa is not functioning. The machine broke down in 2014, four years after it was inaugurated in Ghana. You will need a constant power. And by then, our power was not stable. So we lost so many regions, which is capital. You can imagine you put 500 or um, 50 samples on the rack. It will run up to two hours. In the last 30 minutes, the power goes off. Since Ghana introduced DNA testing, there hasn't been any law enacted to streamline its use. DNA analyst Dr. Kenneth Frimpong believes the passage of a law is crucial to govern institutions that offer such services. With all the matters arising, the most suspected news is the results of the forensic examination the police was suspected to release on September 5, which it failed. The question is, will the advent of technology help us bring finality to this issue? And will the advancement in science help us close this issue once and for all? And more importantly, what will be the content of the test results? The country is waiting to hear from the police services. Grace Hamwa Asari, TV3 News, Accra. Let's hear while longer on this story and grandfather of missing 19-year-old Ruth Abaka says the results of the police DNA test will be inconsequential to the family's belief that their relative is still alive. Emmanuel Anza Kobna stated that the family allowed their samples to be taken because they had to comply with what was required of them and not because they believe that the DNA matching test can do anything. The name of missing 19-year-old Ruth Abeka and all students of Diabene Secondary School in Second D in the Western Region was only added to the three missing Takradi girls after a fourth remain were discovered at the second hideout of Samuel Wills. However, she was the first to have gone missing on July 29, 2019, before 19-year-old Priscilla Bentum went missing about three weeks later in August last year. Ruth Abeka went missing after a church service. Her grandfather, Emmanuel Anzak Hobner, explained the investigator at the Kojukrum Police Station, Juan Osibo, and the transferred commander of the Takradi Central Police Station Superintendent, Peter Oforidonko, failed to act when he reported the case a day after it happened. He indicated that had the police taken his case serious, they could have perhaps saved the three girls, considering the dates Priscilla Bintum also went missing. When he wanted to go back and think about what has happened and see the period that have taken her, 
you won't mind any policeman. Because our case took place 29 July 2018. Suppose they took this very action that they are taking. The three complaints could have not happened. Mr. Anza Kobna said on the day the samples were taken, they were left more confused since the team could not answer their probing questions about whether it was necessary for their samples to be taken. How long has the bones kept at that very side? Mm -hmm. If you want to detain mm -hmm. my uh, lost heart as this, how long? How do you uh, separate other female or male, uh, different uh, pathologists? Nevertheless, he said their hope is not in the results as it will be immaterial since they are of the firm belief that Ruth Abaka is alive. Don't expect the DNA result to conclude our emotion. We are doing our own thing. We are playing. Whether DNA result or no DNA result, we are playing to our God. If not, we are asking God to give us a final result. But we don't feel that our daughter is dead. And we are still making such. According to him, the police perhaps want to end the case abruptly. That is why they are doing what they are doing. If I'm witnessing the process that they are doing, and I have got to know that the schools and the materials that they took from the hideout is the same thing that they are doing or they are taking another thing. Let's take for us tomorrow. They brought the result that the DA shows that my daughter is dead. What does he do? He just want to conclude the uh, case. Be that as it may, he said, even if it means waiting for five years and more for Ruth Abaka to return, the family is prepared to do so. For you, if even you have to wait for five, ten years, you wait. You wait. In God's wisdom, the result, the final result will come. Public relations officer of the Eastern Regional Police, DSP Ebenezer Tete, is making a strong case for crime laboratories to be decentralized to quicken investigation and prosecution of cases. Currently, the Eastern Regional Health Facility does not provide genetic testing for paternity or criminal cases. Ivonikwe has more. The Eastern Regional Hospital is a fairer point for most health cases in the region but they do not have what is required to engage in genetic testing. The medical director of the facility, Dr. Enim Boama, explained what a standard laboratory does is DNA testing for HIV viral load and other health conditions. He wished for an equipment that could enable them test for DNA regarding genetics so they could offer such services to the public. Yeah, I'll be happy for government to provide us with these facilities, but um, with respect to the police investigations and others, I'm not too sure about that because, I mean, those are, have legal implications here and there. For us, we will be happy to have, you know, the facility to be able to help ordinary people who come in to request for those services. The Public Affairs Officer of the Eastern Regional Police, DSP Ebenezer Tete, said... Ideally, all homicide cases, sexual abuse, murder, and others require genetic DNA tests are done to ensure suspects picked up are right targets before they are charged and processed before court. He noted this would help quicken investigation procedures and other determinants of a case and called for decentralization of laboratory for crime purposes. The sophisticated nature of crime is even what demands that we make some of those facilities available and accessible to officers so that you will not delay the process of investigation and uh, prosecution of some of those cases. Cases of crime which need laboratory testing are done in Accra. If there is a facility in every region that, for instance, if you have to conduct DNA tests, you don't have to go to Accra, that would be the ideal situation. As the country awaits the DNA results of bones suspected to be that of the three missing Takrada girls, which was done in Accra, pressure is mounting on government to invest in DNA testing facilities in other regions as well. <laughs> So we asked you on our various social media 
platforms on what you make of this story, especially on the fact that the period the police asked for the release of the DNA result has elapsed. And we have so much of your comments coming in. Let me quickly go to Facebook and read out some of the comments you have been sharing on our Facebook page on TV3 Ghana. Now, this one is from Nanaya Apia Kubi. It says, please, let's wait for the announcement. Sometimes laboratory results fail and there may be have to be a repeat or further consultation and deliberation. So let's be a little patient as we all hope that our sisters are not dead. This one is from Rosina Tete and it says, God should help the family find their beloved daughters. Benjamin Godson says, that's Ghana for you. When you are fortunate to see a new day, thank God and be careful. No one is ready. Take responsibility of your life. Ati God's Ernest says, it appears we have no choice than to keep waiting. The issue is really touching the masses, but it's going to serve as a case study for other future occurrences. May God be with the family in this trying time. Abdul Rahman Ahmed Gunu says they are trying to, in a way, justify the family stance that they won't take the exercise in good faith if the test does not conform to what they are really that their children, Ghana and competency, are like a parallel line. Hmm. Al Hassan Sumani said very poorly from the inception of the issue itself. Amidu exhibit Inusa, nothing better will come from the police since they decided not to be truthful from day one. We certainly can't expect anything sincere. Baba Mutada says, we are watching them with our eyes open widely. I also think we should give them time because any uncertainty or any unexpected situation can happen. Echo Genia says, the results have confirmed that the girls are dead. Hence, they can't okay a call. We can't really read your message because they, we haven't seen the results yet. Um, let me take a lot more. This one says that I don't think they need demonstration again in order to release the results from Al Hassan Sumani. Edward Basoro Ahamana and Gordon says, the anger that is in me about this case, eh, if I should talk with this, my mind, eh, people will not like it at all. So let me just pass by. This one says, the family must not sleep over this because the suspect already said the girls are alive. Wisdom blessing, Pakilo. Um, the CID boss, Mamitiwa, must be held responsible coming from Se Galaxy. Amanquetia. So lots of your comments coming in. We'll take a lot more when we come back after this break. You're still live on News at 10 on TV3. See you soon. Welcome back from the break. The health of patients seeking health care at the Salaga Government Hospital is at risk as patients and visitors resort to open defecation in the hospital. The only toilet facility constructed in 2002 under the HIPIC project has deteriorated, forcing them to ease a neoping, a situation described by health providers as dangerous. Here's a report by Christopher Amaku. The Salaga Government Hospital is a primary health facility which started its operations around the 1960s as a small health center. It was elevated to the status of a district hospital in the 1970s, providing pediatrics, maternity, dental, laboratory services, among others. The hospital records outpatient cases of 100 daily, with malaria topping the cases reported. One big challenge of the hospital is lack of a toilet facility. The only toilet facility available is a HIPIC toilet constructed by the Assembly in 2002. However, authorities say it is not in use due to its bad state. This has prompted patients and relatives to resort to open defecation. The health service administrator of the hospital, Aloysius Bukuma, says the situation is worrying. The public toilet that we have in this facility that was put up by the district assembly is in a deplorable state and is quite a distance from the wards and units of the hospital. Uh, that expresses some security concerns for clients. He attributed some of the reasons to the attitude of visitors and called for a radical approach to fight the menace. We also need to, to change uh, attitudes and behaviors of our clients and then also to improve the uh, water situation in the hospital.
a cleaner of the hospital, Bakari Akaya, explains what he goes through every morning cleaning the place. When you just come and start moving the place, you see that people are heating inside the grasses and they are urinating inside. Too. As at the time of filing this report, a youth group in Salaga, known as Concerned Youth of Salaga, were molding blocks to start a toilet facility. Goal 6 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals aim at ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all, but the government will need to make conscious efforts at achieving this target. The Coalition of National Sovereignty will be staging a demonstration in Kumasi over what it describes as an increasing spate of public sector corruption. The Coalition believes the President has not shown enough commitment in punishing some appointees cited in corrupt deals, hence emboldening others to follow suit. Here's reports by Vitri Spiogabra. Coalition for National Sovereignty, a pressure group comprising some opposition parties, particularly the NDC and PNC and other civil society organizations, claimed cases of corruption involving government appointees are on the increase. Leading member of the coalition and national organizer of the PNC, this morning too, at a press conference on the streets of Kajitia, catalogued a number of alleged corrupt cases that has bedeviled the government. What we have seen can only be best described as demonocratization of thievery and the institutionalization of corruption. Instead of delivering on promises of a better life for the people of this country, this government is busily delivering on one day, one fraud. That is one D, one F. One day, one scandal. One D, one S. This morning, so said the posture of the president has emboldened more appointees to be engaged in corrupt practices to enrich themselves. It told on September 19, stage what it terms a public manifestation demonstration in Kumasi to protest the increase in corruption, insecurity and economic hardship Ghanaians are facing. We will embark on a demonstration in Kumasi on the 19th of September in the Ashanti region. We shall announce the escalation of this demonstration to other regions until the Ekufuadu government wakes up to the reality and becomes sensitive to the numerous flights of the suffering people of Ghana. Deputy General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Peter Buama Otukuno, stressed the coalition will stage series of demonstrations across the country. This coalition was formed two years ago when President Ekufuadu decided that he would sell the sovereignty of this country to the Americans. And we have embarked on several public manifestations and we are going to continue with the public manifestation. Today, in this marketplace, in this open place, we are doing another public manifestation. This is a press conference to address some pertinent issues affecting us in this country. So 13 September is like six days away. We'll be keeping an eye on this one. But away from politics, Chediampong Group is one of the indigenous groups that continue to educate people through form, traditional music and dance. Adwa Adobia had a close-up with the leader of the group, Otrema Kwame Napra, and has come through with this report. Culture is defined as the ideas, customs and social behavior of a particular people or society. Culture entails the food, music and dance which can be associated with a particular group of people. One medium by which the culture of a group of people is transmitted from one generation to the next is through music and dance ensemble. As conveyed in traditional drumming and dancing of Ghana, drum rhythms communicate important messages in all occasions about unity, bravery in war, honoring ancestors and chiefs, and initiating into adulthood among others. Chediampo Ensemble is one of such groups formed in 1982 to educate young people on traditional music and dance. The ensemble has traveled the length and breadth of Ghana and abroad to display the rich Ghanaian culture and dance at a number of events. 
The leader and founder of the group, 67-year-old Kwame Napra, says it was an opportunity to train young people to learn about their culture. So I decided to um, come up with the traditions, especially the, the musical types. Because when you come to Cape Coast, we have so many. You have Azawa, Asafu, Menson, Nkrodo, Kolomashi, Badze, Sotsi, but uh, of late, if you go to any, any school and you ask of any uh, traditional music or uh, uh, yeah, indigenous music in the central region, every uh, school child will, will say Abatampa is the latest one. He prides himself in his ability to preserve the culture of his people, particularly at a time when modernization has taken over the cultural pride of a people. Kwame Napra says traveling around the world not only to perform as a cultural group, but as a jazz performer was a great opportunity. I traveled to Princeton University to have a, 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 a part to play in the Black African History Month. Well, we've been done that for, for, for some years. I also have another group, jazz group in Denmark, which each year I, I go and uh, have like summer jazz festival. To ensure that he leaves a legacy, his 33-year-old son took up his father's interest in business. He's determined to make his father's dream of having the biggest drama and music ensemble a reality. I saw uh, that uh, our tradition in, in Ghana is going downward. So I decided to join my father so that we can bring the youth to, uh, to, to, to come up and then train them to understand how, how our tradition and our culture uh, is valuable. There is an adage from Benny who says that when you practice your culture, it never dies. So, let us make it a point to continue to preserve our culture. So, which of the dance mentioned by the man is yours? Well, coming from the Eastern region, mine definitely will be Adua. Thank you for joining us in this edition of News at 10 on TV3, which was also live on DSTV channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa. Sorry. Enjoy the rest of your evening.